topic of today's lecture is maintenance and care of laboratory animals part 2 uh, this lecture is in continuation of last lecture uh, we have already discussed these uh, that uh, these are five uh, elements of uh, main constraints of animal facility this is the plant environment animal care personnel equipments or standard operating procedures uh, we have already discussed this physical plant and environment in last lecture Uh, we will take this uh, animal care in this lecture and other uh, these two components. Uh, food is very essential element. One should check the feeding bowls randomly and observe whether the bowls have sufficient feed or not. Uh, one should check the quality of feed for fungal contamination. If any color change in feed, then it should be brought to the notice of concerned person. Uh, check the type of diet and appropriateness of the uh, feed. For that particular species, each species should be fed with a diet that is specific to them. Uh, the suitability to the species, um, suitability of feed depends on the composition of the feed. It differs from species to species. Uh, appearance of the feed, presence of pesticides, presence of heavy metals. Uh, uh, these are different types of pelletic feed for lab animals. Uh, bedding. Uh, one should check for the cleanliness of the cages and inquire with the animal caretaker about the frequency of cleaning cages and the method and materials that are used for cleaning of cages. Animal bedding can influence experimental data and animal well-being. Uh, bedding should be used in amounts sufficient to keep animals dry between case changes. Bedding should be appropriate for the species. Care should be taken to keep the bedding from coming in contact with the watering tube or liquid as the case might become flooded. These are different types of padding materials. Uh, this is a uh, padding husk and the corn cob, uh, wood shaving, uh, paper cuttings or paper shreds. These are used as padding materials for the animals. Uh, husbandry. A good husbandry program provides the environment, housing, and care that permits animals to grow, mature, reproduce, and maintain good health. Good husbandry minimizes variations that can modify an animal's response to experimentation. Elements of good husbandry include palatable, nutritionally adequate and non-contaminated food provided daily, uh, water that is potable, bedding that is appropriate for the species, a sanitation schedule at the cage, roof and facility level that is conducive to maintaining the health of the animals, proper waste disposal, a sound program for pest control. Uh, these elements we will discuss in the coming slides one by one. Uh, feet. Food made available to animals should be non-contaminated, palatable and nutritionally adequate. Areas in which diets are stored should be kept clean and enclosed to prevent entry of pests. Food should be stored off the floor and away from the walls on the pallets, racks or carts. Feed should be examined when received to assure that feed order is correct and the feed bags have not been damaged or possibly contaminated. The date of manufacture or manufacturer's code and other factors that affect shelf life of food should be noted. Uh, proper rotation of feed will assure that the oldest is used first and newest used last. In this example, uh, feed is being stored inappropriately. The newest feed, August, uh, dated 7th August, and ha has been placed on the top of the older feed, dated uh, 28th July. Contaminants in food can have a significant effect on an animal's biochemical and physiological processes even when present in concentrations too low to cause clinical, toxic, uh, clinical signs of toxicity. Feed and chemicals should not be stored in the same room or area. Uh, food should be stored and used in a prescribed manner, usually within 6 months after manufacture. Feed containing vitamin C usually has a shelf life of only 3 months and many, uh, may benefit uh, from being stored in a refrigerated environment. Purified and chemically defined synthetic diets uh, or synthetic diets are often uh, less stable than natural ingredient diets. Their shelf life is usually uh, less than 6 months and these diets should be stored at 4 degrees centigrade or lower. This synthetic diet stored in the photo has become moldy due to improper storage. Uh, feed containers used in animal room should be identified to preclude the use of outdated food. This feed container has a label that shows the type of feed uh, the date uh, of manufacture and the date of uh, date the feeder was filled. Feed containers should be cleaned and sanitized regularly. Uh, feeders should be designed to allow for easy access to food with minimum contamination. 
Uh, in this example, uh, shown in the pic, an uncovered mouse feeder containing a specialty diet has been contaminated with feces and urine from the mice. Uh, water. Randomly check the water, uh, the bottles for any leakage. If water leakage is there, then bedding material will be wet, which is uncomfortable to the animals. <coughs> animals should be given clean and add lepidum water within clean bottles. Uh, animals should have access to portable, uncontaminated water. It is better to replace water bottles than refill them. If bottles are to be refilled, care should be taken to replace each bottle on the case from which it was removed. In this example, <coughs> all the bottles have been removed from the cases simultaneously and confusion as to where they uh, belong might occur leading to cross contamination. Automatic watering systems uh, should be checked at the case level daily to ensure proper maintenance, cleanliness and operation. It is also important to check the pressure reducing station. Uh, in this example, the water pressure of 9 psi is too high for rodents and they would not be able to drink from the liquid. Now we come to sanitation. Uh, one should randomly check the sanitary methods adopted by the caretaker and evaluate whether it is adequate. A clean atmosphere in animal facility should be maintained for the good health of animals which involves bedding clean as appropriate cleaning and disinfection. Uh, the sanitation facilities should prevent cross contamination. Uh, they should control aerosols, provides personal protection. The monitoring effectiveness of uh, sanitation facilities is helpful in maintenance of uh, uh, health of animals. These facilities include use of vacuums, use of chemicals, etc. Uh, sanitation involves bedding cleans, cleaning and disinfection of the um, housing unit in a manner conducive to maintaining the health of the animal. Uh, one should be aware of the cleaning schedule and how the housing units are marked. Uh, red arrow to indicate date of sanitation or the date to be sanitized. Soil bedding should be removed and replaced with fresh materials as often as necessary to keep the animals clean and dry. However, Contact padding should not be changed in the animal room, as shown in the right side of the photo, uh, to prevent exposure of the staff to allergens and animal cases to possible cross contamination. Primary enclosures can be disinfected with chemicals and or hot water. Temperature sensitive tapes attached to cases or racks used daily will provide assurance <coughs> that the case wash unit is reaching recommended temperatures for adequate disinfection. Uh, in this photo, in one instance, the temperature was not released. Uh, animal rooms and support areas that the secondary enclosure should be cleaned regularly and disinfected as appropriate for the work conducted. Cleaning utensils uh, should be assigned to specific areas and not transported between areas that pose different risk of infection. In the example at the right, the two hand rooms are from different rooms. Uh, sanitation. Uh, is to disinfect or to sanitize. There are four levels of sanitation, cleaning, sanitation, disinfection and sterilization. Cleaning means complete removal of visible soil from the surface. Sanitation is reducing the organism living on inanimate objects to an acceptable public health standard. Disinfection is to, uh, reducing the number of pathogenic organisms not necessarily exposed to a harmless level. And sterilization is rendering an object free of all living organisms. Um, and how to sanitize? The animal facility is continuously recontaminated by air, water, animals and people. The sanitation program includes cleaning and sanitizing. Uh, degree of risk depends on the type and level of contamination and use. Greater risk of infection if organisms are resistant and or highly uh, virulent. More risk of uh, risk if the animals are particularly susceptible. For example, immunocompromised animals. And how to choose a chemical? Uh, it, it depends on the following factors. The spectrum of activity is the first. Uh, the specific organism tested against the product. The effectiveness of the chemical in hard water. The hard water ions can inactivate the chemical. Third is the stability of the pH. Buffers prevent greater pH changes from the concentrated to the diluted form or by additives such as soaps. Use dilution judiciously. Using too much of product is wasteful and using too little may reduce or eliminate the antimicrobial effect. Contact time. It is essential that <laughs> is not being in contact with surface long enough to kill the most resistant organism present. Temperature. Heat could cause the evaporation of some of the components of the formulation. And waste disposal. One should <laughs> check the waste disposal mechanism thoroughly. 
check whether biologic and hazardous waste materials removed and disposed of regularly and safely. Check whether adequate numbers of properly labeled waste bins are statistically placed. Uh, conventional biologic and hazardous waste should be removed and disposed of regularly and safely in accordance with local and national standards. Waste containers should be leak proof and refueled with the tight fitting lids. In the example at the right, the cover is missing in the biohazard uh, Emergency weekend and holiday care is very important. Check whether proper arrangements are made for maintenance of animals on weekends and holidays. One should check the arrangements made in case of emergency and also disaster management at the animal facility. In the event of an emergency, institutional security personnel should be able to reach people responsible for the animals. Pest control, uh, check whether proper pest control, insect or wild rodent measures are followed at the facility. And transport of laboratory animals. One should check whether the transport of animals from one place to another is undertaken with care. Check the <coughs> mode of transport for animals. It depends on the distance, seasonal and climatic conditions and the species of the animals. Check whether the containers are of appropriate size and comfortable for free movement and protection from possible injuries. Quarantine and stabilization are also very important. The animals must be quarantined before inducting into the main colony. Duration of quarantine depends on the species procured. Period of quarantine for various species is as follows. <coughs> for small laboratory animals, it is 7 days. Genetically modified lab animals, it is 14 days. Dogs for research purpose and monkeys and large animals, it is 6 weeks. Veterinary care of animals. Proper veterinary care should be provided to the animals. If an animal is, uh, any animal is sick, report to the veterinarian for further action. <coughs> Uh, animals should be cared for by qualified personnel every day, including weekends and holidays. Uh, in the event of an emergency, personnel should be able to reach individuals responsible for the animals. In the example at the right, personnel on call are posted on a bulletin board in the animal facility. The PT chart contains the date, uh, veterinarian's name, contact number, supervisor's name, contact number. Uh, now we come to the identification and records, which are very important. Methods of uh, animal identification include room, track, pen, stall and place cards with region of barcode information, collar, bands, <coughs> plates, caps, colored space, ear notches and tags, <coughs> tattoos, subcutaneous transporters are acceptable methods of identifying animals. Link and reports for individual animals are valuable sources of information, particularly for dogs, cats, non-human primates and farm animals. The record should include pertinent clinical and diagnostic information, date of inoculation, history of surgery, post-operative care, as well as information on experimental use. <coughs> the identification card should include the name and means of contact of the responsible investigators, protocol number, species, strain, and other pertinent information about the animal. <coughs> the case card at the right is a suitable example of a properly prepared rodent case card. Contains investigator's name, protocol number, induction of the election date, uh, whether it is male or female, age, weight. In this example, a case card has been changed. The question should be who changed the card, why, and are the animals being used appropriately in an approved protocol of similar nature and of pain or distress category. Adequate veterinary care consists of effective programs for preventive medicine, surveillance, diagnosis, treatment and control of disease including genosis control, anesthesia and analgesia, surgery and post-surgical care, assessment of animal well-being, euthanasia. We will discuss these in the coming slides. Uh, then <coughs> for transportation. <coughs> the animal should be acquired lawfully and the receiving institution uh, should attempt to ensure all trans transactions are conducted in a lawful manner. <coughs> the method of transportation should be appropriate for the species to protect the animals from injury, exposure to the elements or possible contamination. Uh, preventive medicine, the effective preventive medicine programs enhance the research value of animals by maintaining healthy animals while minimizing possible variations associated with disease and in apparent infection. These programs consist of various uh, combinations for policies, procedures and practices related to the quarantine and the of animals by species, source and health status. 
<coughs> health monitoring is very important. It is done to answer the following questions. Are the animals in the unit clean? If not, what are they contaminated with? Health monitoring program mainly includes the screening of animals for viruses, bacteria, fungi and parasites. <clears throat> the design of health monitoring program depends on housing condition, research activities, frequency of introducing animals, uh, likelihood of interference, type of experiment. The implications of infectious agents on experiment. Rodent pathogens are not uh, only hazardous to animals but also to humans and severely influence the animal experiments. Some are pathogenic and may induce clinical signs with variable morbidity and mortality. Most of the microorganisms induce mild disease <coughs> and silent infections are often activated by experimental procedures like stress, toxic substances, tumor or environmental influences uh, such as transportation, suboptimal humidity and temperature. The design of monitoring program we have already seen in the previous slide. It depends on research activities, housing condition, uh, whether the housing is conventional or barrier based type of experiment, long term or short term, frequency of introducing animals, likelihood of interference with the research, and methods of sampling <coughs> may be of two types, random sampling from all areas, or sampling from different age group of animals, and the frequency should be once in three months, and size at least 10 animals <coughs> at a time. Collection of material for viral samples, serum is collected for bacteria and fungus, laser, trachea, lung, use, designer, <coughs> sebum may be collected. For parasitological examination, skin or hair for exoparasite, fecal contents, serum for serological testing. Then how to control the disease? All animals should be observed for signs of illness, uh, injury or abnormal behavior by personal training to recognize such signs. They should be done at least daily, but more frequently if the situation warrants. <coughs> Professional judgment should be used to ensure the frequency and character of the observations minimize risk of the involved animals. It is imperative that appropriate methods exist for disease surveillance and diagnosis, that signs of illness, distress, and other deviations from normal uh, should be reported promptly uh, to ensure appropriate diagnosis and treatment. Uh, prevention of disease. It is often thought of disease prevention is often thought of as simply buying animals with a known health status. But what about the animals that have uh, been in the colony for a long time? In the example at the right, it appears that a preventive dentistry program is needed to assure this dog has a clean and healthy oral cavity. <coughs> Reporting of disease. The use of an animal observation and reporting card. Similar to that shown on the right, uh, is an effective way to ensure timely animal observation and reporting of deviations in the animal's condition. This copy is for veterinarian. An identical copy of this card is placed on the case of the affected animal, so the animal is easy, easy to locate. Uh, in this, the investigator's name is present, a species, uh, strain, age, project, uh, ID number, date of birth, time. <coughs> sex, room, uh, case, location, and technician signature is here. The back of the animal observation card has spaces for the technician to indicate the sign or of the symptom observed. Identical to the back of the card given to the veterinarian, this card alerts all technicians to the animal's condition or situation. Uh, treatment of disease uh, is very important. Color coding of drugs for expiration date is only one effective manner to ensure that effective medical care is available within the animal facility. The presence and possible use of outdated drugs is a deficiency and a suitable program should be in place to prevent their use. Uh, and, uh, for surgery, appropriate attention to pre-surgical planning, personal training, surgical and aseptic technique and animal well-being during all phases of surgical uh, protocol will enhance the outcome of the surgery. Pre-surgical planning should include input from all members of the surgical team. It is also important that all personnel have appropriate training <laughs> to ensure good surgical technique is practiced. One easily overlooked aspect of pre-surgical planning is the storage and uh, use of surgical instrument sets. The example on the right shows a surgical pack that has been sterilized and taken. 
check for the situation A and the certificate validation A. <coughs> Survival surgical procedures may be classified as major or minor. However, both should be completed using a septic technique. Although major surgery usually envisages the use of a large surgery suit, students also may undergo major surgery. In the example at the right, proper procedure and practices are being followed. Uh, marking a case card to indicate the animals have undergone surgery is a convenient way to alert the care staff of the special needs or condition of the animals. Socialization of animals is very important. The social environment usually involves physical contact and communication among members of the same species and the caregiver. When appropriate and compatible with the protocol, animals should be housed in physical contact with conspecific same species animals. Environmental enrichment is also a very important element. Um, the foraging board is attached um, uh, to a non-human primate case while animals in the wild invest substantial time in foraging for searching food. Uh, animals in captivity are usually deprived of foraging opportunities. However, they will readily work for food even in the presence of freely available identical food. Uh, what other enrichment devices are used? Is there a schedule for rotation? We will see in coming slides. There are mainly two types of environmental enrichment, social enrichment and physical enrichment. Uh, social enrichment means socialization of animals with conspecifics and or under specifics, including humans. <coughs> a social partner leads to an increase of alertness and exploratory behavior and provides diversion, occupation, and also some feelings of security in stable harmonious groups. <coughs> the physical enrichment is again divided into three parts. The type complex enclosure, sensory stimuli, nutritional stimuli. The first type is uh, complexity means appropriate structuring of the cage or pan environment is more beneficial than provision of larger floor area. Most students and rabbits attempt to divide their living space into separate areas for feeding, <coughs> resting and excretion. Such divisions may be uh, facilitated by structures within the cage, for example, shelters, nest boxes, nesting materials, tubes, and platforms that provide withdrawal areas and lookout facilities. The provision of nesting materials is seen that it enhances the breeding results in mice and rats. Rats, mice, hamsters, and jerseys, the nesting materials provided for resting and breeding purpose. And uh, it is important to provide nest boxes or other refuses for rats. For guinea pigs, refuses uh, such as nest boxes, tubes, or shelters are provided. A uh, wood sticks for chewing and gnawing, uh, soft wood sticks are provided. Uh, they are having a habit of chewing uh, the objects. Judges, uh, in this, for this the thick layer of litter, approximately 20 <coughs> cm long are provided for digging and nesting behavior. Nesting material, for example, hay or straw are provided, and wood sticks for chewing and gnawing are provided. Hamsters, uh, for hamsters, nesting material, diffuse area, tube or hut, roughage, and the gnawing objects are provided. Uh, for rabbits, minimum roughage hay blocks or chewy sticks and uh, as well as an area for lookout and uh, withdrawal possibilities uh, like uh, for example platform is provided for them for breeding doors, uh, nesting material, nest box or other refuse uh, are provided toys can have a beneficial effect uh, on the animals uh, in development of their exploratory behavior and in locomotor and visual, uh, development of their visual performance Second is sensory enrichment. Most satisfying uh, enrichment for rodents and rabbits is visual, auditory, olfactory, and tactile communication with conspecifics or wonder specifics, either directly or through bars. Case cleaning is necessary routine procedure in lab animal facilities, providing different food items, for example, carrots for rabbits, seeds for rodents, may act as a taste stimuli. Uh, third is nutritional enrichment, uh, presentation of food, and giving the animal the opportunity to forage. For example, scattering food in the bagging appears to prevent boredom uh, because in nature a large part of time budget is spent on this activity. Uh, even though these food items might be contaminated by feces and urine, when the animals have no opportunity to compartmentalize their environment. The frequency and schedule have an impact on animals. Feeding rabbits immediately before dark in their active period instead of in the morning reduced stereotypic behavior remarkably. 
for guinea pigs and rabbit, additional food items, hay, straw, or um, grass roots can satisfy the need for rubbishy and for chewing. Wood sticks, aspen blocks are provided to them. Now, uh, the fourth constraint of uh, animal facility is personnel. Appropriate personnel protective equipment should be available at the door of the animal facility. It will protect from the possible extraneous contamination. Therefore, shoe covers and safety glasses are among the most accurate PPE. Uh, for personnel and training, check whether personnel caring for animals are appropriately trained. If not, formal or on the job training should be provided to facilitate effective implementation of humane care and use of animals. Check whether personnel are properly trained regarding zoonosis, chemical safety, microbiology, chemical hazards, and handling of waste material. Check whether personnel use protective clothes while entering or handling of animals. Check whether periodic uh, medical evaluation of animal handling caring staff is done. Uh, fifth and last is equipments or standard operating procedures. Uh, the standard operating procedures related to animal facility activities, equipment in the animal facility must be available at the workplace. Um, record keeping is very important. Every facility should maintain proper records and should be made available during inspection. Some of the important documents to be checked are as follows. Form C is the number of animals, uh, record for the number of animals that is acquired or bred uh, and it is maintained on daily basis. Form D is the number of record for the number of animals acquired by the investigator and in this the IAC protocol approval details are present. Uh, other important records are animal house plans which includes typical floor plan, all pictures, etc. Animal house staff record, both technical or and non-technical health record of the staff or animals, all SOPs relevant to the animals, breeding, stock, purchase, and sales record, minutes of institutional animal ethics committee meetings, death record, mental record of sick animals, training record of staff involved in animal activities, and order and basis report. Then equipment, uh, appropriate and adequate equipment should be available. For equipment, the strict program uh, of validation, qualification, calibration, and maintenance is very critical. Appropriate log book should be maintained. Uh, the problems associated with managing the animal facilities include procurement of good diet, that is standard feed, management with the limited budgets and resources, handling of supporting the staff, their recruitment, training, incentives, deep habits, uh, procurement of <coughs> bedding materials, matters related to ethical committee. Uh, these are the references for making this presentation. All about maintenance and care of the animals.